cut. So what the heck is this? Well, you may have been able to guess from the action of these two things that it's some sort of audio visualizer. Well, close. It's actually an audio headphone amp or psychoacoustic concentrator manufactured by yours truly. 120 volts, 60 hertz, manufactured in 2011. So, as you can read on my uh, blog that you can uh, access by clicking the link somewhere in this video frame, I uh, wanted to whip up an audio amplifier for you know, my pair of uh, Audio-Technica ATH, ATH M50s here, which are very good headphones, but uh, you know, my computer here what, didn't have the best amp inside of it, and I kind of wanted a cool project. And uh, I got to thinking, well, I could build a normal, you know, Seymour uh, amplifier like inside an Altoids tin or something like that, and that would work just fine, but I wanted something a bit cooler. You know, if I sit here at my desk all day, I've got to have some style. So I decided to build this um, hybrid uh, tube and solid state uh, op amp, uh, headphone amp. Now the amp itself is a, an implementation of this Soha headphone amp found on the uh, Headwise forums. And basically it's a 12 AU7 uh, tube with an op amp in here. Uh, so basically the signal comes in through the jack at the back, comes in, goes through here, there's a volume potentiometer here, goes in, basically goes straight to the tube, and then after it's done its thing, the output goes to this op amp and then comes out through this connector here, doo -doo 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 -doo, comes all the way out to the output here on the front panel. Now this thing, thing sounds really good. Uh, Pink Floyd seems to be a favorite. It's just kind of, you know, the music is odd already, right? It's very good, but it's kind of odd, spacey. And then you're listening to it on this weird thing with these things displaying some green bouncy things, and it's, it's quite an experience, as one of my friends said. It's an experience. Okay, now let's talk about these. These are called magic eye tubes. And uh, they're really cool because, you know, they're green and glowy and they move. But they're also cooler because they're from Russia. Yeah, tubes from Russia. How much cooler in James Bond can you get than that? Anyways, their function was basically to work as tuning indicators in uh, radios. So imagine this is your tuning dial and you're trying to find a station. As you get closer, your signal gets stronger and you can see that visually and eventually you know it gets really strong and there you go you know you're tuned and if you start getting a little bit off then you know it, it goes down and uh... this is really good because it's hard to get a quick uh... feedback through you know your speakers that your tuning is a bit off so you could be getting a uh, suboptimal tuning and not know it but with these the feedback is instantaneous so that's why they use them that's all well and good, but, you know, this is so much cooler than the boring radio. Especially if you turn off the light. Yeah. Let's turn off the, uh, the screens, too. Yeah. Bounce, bounce, bounce. All right. So how is that all driven? Well, it's very, 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 very simple. First, let's turn this off because there's high voltage everywhere in here. The, uh, this thing over here only works at something like, well, it's less than 100 volts, I forget exactly. Something like maybe 40 or 50 volts. These things go at like 100 or 120, something similar to that. It's been a while since I built this thing, so check my blog and I'll probably say it there. So, how does this work? Well, it actually works almost exactly the same as this audio uh, vacuum tube, except with one little twist. 
So here's the schematic symbol of a typical uh, triode, uh, just like the one that I'm using as my, you know, main audio triode. And as a quick refresher course, what happens is you've got your heater down here. You run that about, you know, 6.3 volts is pretty typical. You've got your cathode, and then you've got your anode. And typically, uh, a current wants to flow from here to here. But then you get this grid in the way, and you supply your low voltage signal in here that you want to amplify. And your signal here repels the electrons that are trying to get from here to here. And thus it modulates the current going through here, and thus you get you know, an amplified signal coming out of here. And that's how you get your uh, you know, louder audio. Now the way this thing works is exactly the same, except you see that little, the, the cup-shaped spoon thing that actually glows? Well, that thing is actually your anode. The uh, cathode and the heater are inside this little uh, cylinder here with the angled top. So this thing is the anode, and it has a phosphor on it. So as your electrons are trying to get from here to here, this grid, which is a special shape in this tube, directs the electrons onto this grid, or sorry, onto this uh, anode, in a specific pattern. And as the voltage here gets higher and higher, the electrons actually get spread out more here. Now, as I said, the uh, anode actually has a phosphor on it, so that when the beam of electrons hits the anode, it glows, but only in the parts where the electrons actually hit it. Hence, the grid, when it changes the shape of the electron beam, it changes the shape of the glowy green coolness. Awesome. If you really wanted to, you could actually take this out and put it in another one of these. But uh, the audio characteristics aren't very good, of course. It's not meant for anything other than display. Okay, so here's the driver circuit that I whipped up. Hey, careful. Hinges, you're holding up some glass, be careful. Anyways, so here's a little driver circuit that I made uh, to drive the, um, the grids of these tubes here. It's very simple. So the audio comes in off of here. You see these two cables that are plugged into the uh, circuit board here. They just tap directly off of the stuff that comes out for the headphones. And they go into this op amp and uh, basically it's just a bandwidth limited uh, non-inverting amplifier. That's it. You've got these two potentiometer here, these trimmers, they control the gain of the circuit. And these capacitors, you know, down here, as you can see, they kind of uh, provide a uh, bandwidth limit so that if your audio signal goes loud, soft, loud, soft, these won't uh, react at the same speed. So you'll get a nice kind of a, a, dr a nice drop off in the um, visual. Kind of like one of those uh, VU meters, you know, they have the peak display. So you're you have the main display bouncing up and down really fast, but you have the peak that kind of slowly goes up and down, similar to that. So if I were to turn this on, try not to get zapped. So if I were to turn this on and make a lot of noise, you know, at the uh, this thing here, see it's not reacting so, so fast, it's not bouncing all over the place, it kind of pulses a little bit. So that's the effect that I wanted. So that's what I got. And that's pretty much it for this entire thing. There's not much that goes into one of these things, but uh, it sure sounds great. And with this case, I'm uh, very happy with the, with the final result. Uh, let's see what else is there. Oh, underneath this, uh, this shield, which is just some aluminum foil with some tape on it, packing tape, there's this small transformer, um, and all that does is provide the high voltage supply for these two tubes. Um, it needs about 120 volts uh, to operate correctly. And I didn't really, I, these were kind of a secondary addition, so I didn't really consider these tubes uh, when I was building the rest of this. So it's really a dual supply uh, project. Um, I could have made some uh, voltage multipliers to get the correct voltage, but I had this thing laying around and it wasn't doing anything, so, you know, that's that.
and it makes a lot of electrical noise, so this thing quiets it down to almost imperceptible. You can see another couple noise reduction things while we're on the subject. Uh, this entire plate is grounded. Um, if, if you don't do that, then every time you touch this, it goes <laughs> and it's really annoying. Uh, and also, if you have you know a light like this on, uh, without you know the shielding and without grounding, you know kind of everything, uh, you get very nasty 60 hertz hum. So the actual case itself comes from an antique shop, and uh, it's actually not that much of an antique. It's about as old as I am. This is what the guy says it was built in like 82 or something like that. Um, it was a supposedly a sample for like a big chest that you would put, I don't know, your books into or whatever. Like, you know, at the foot of your bed or whatever the place to put it would be. So the guy would go around and carry around a bunch of these little boxes so you could see, uh, you know, what the big box would look like. And then the big box would be shipped to you, you know, via whatever truck or whatever the transportation of your choice is. But uh, it's pretty much perfect because it came with these nice steampunky bands on it and uh, it lent itself really well to, you know, these additional little brass fittings that I uh, cut out with a Dremel, you know, that one too. This one, and this one. So, <laughs> fun. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, go ahead and post any questions you might have and um, I will try my best to answer them. Uh, I know I'm going to get questions about this. Um, maybe I'll do a video in the near future on how I actually did this. Actually, you know what? I'll make a video right now and tell you. Um, stupid chair. This thing is on an incline and it turns by itself. It's really annoying. Anyways, so I'll make a quick video on uh, how I made that plaque. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, but don't expect me to actually go and make one to show you on video right now because it's kind of time intensive and uh, I don't have any more brass plates and it's kind of messy and yeah, I'll just explain it verbally. Alright, thanks again for watching guys. Uh, subscribe or at least comment, positive or negative, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, thanks again.